Hello everyone, welcome back to another great tutorial. In this one, we are going to model this ball. I am really happy with the result, especially the thread section of the ball. As you can see, it is looking great and smooth. I believe I figured a great way to model this kind of shapes. Also, the top section of the ball is also looking great. I am really happy with the result. In the second part, which will be on my Patreon, I will be rendering this ball. I believe it's going to be my first Redshift tutorial. So if you want to watch that one, you can check out my Patreon. So anyway, now let's get into modeling. First, let's go to the front view, hit Shift and V, back and import the image plane. Here's one. I'm going to crank this up to, let's say, 90%. Uh, a quick note about the image plane. I will not be following that bulb in the image. So it's just for a rough reference. Now I'm going to add a cylinder in, scale that up. There should be more than enough. Let's make it editable, hit zero on the keyboard. Now I will go into points mode, hit zero on the keyboard to get rectangle selection. Select these points, scale them down. Then I will go into polygon mode. Then select these polygons with rectangle selection, hold down control. Let's extrude them out. I'm going to scale these down. Then finally, I will hold down Ctrl and move these down to extrude them out. All right, that was easy. Now for the top part, hmm, let's select these polygons only. By the way, let me turn off that for plane. While these are selected, hit T on the keyboard, which is the scale tool. Hold down Ctrl and scale these in. Then I'm going to hold down Ctrl and move these up. For that part, I believe this is going to be enough. Now let's focus on the bottom part, which will be more difficult. And I am sure that most of you guys are here for, for that part, the thread part. So now I believe we can select these polygons and split them out. Right click, split, which will create a new object. Now I will right click, select extrude tool and extrude these polygons out like that. You should turn on the caps option. Otherwise, we are not going to get that top cap. Now I'm going to hit 4 on my keyboard. Uh, you probably will not have that shortcut. Just click on the model mode. As you can see, the axis of the object is a little off. So I will go to tall tools, axis, and hit center axis too. Now I will go to the top view, go into Model mode and scale that in. I'm gonna move this up. I think this is looking fine now. I will add in a helix. Actually, if I hold down shift and click on the helix, it's gonna make the helix a child of the selected object. Now I'm going to change its orientation to X and Z and scale that down. Or we can play around with the radius, like let's say 100. Too much. Let's try 85. All right. So the end radius should be the same, 85. And I'm going to bring this down. Uh, select the helix. I'm going to change the height so it's going to fit in and the other thing is the angle i think it is too low i'm going to add up 360 degrees more so it's going to make it 1080 degrees now i think we should scale that down to 8 centimeters all right that will be enough. Now I will need a geometry. So hope we can generate a geometry out of that helix. Well, first, obviously, we are going to need uh, an object and it's going to be a plane. I'm going to change its axis to plus X. Then I will hold down Shift and select Spline Wrap Deformer. Then I'm going to put that helix 
over here and let me hit NNB to see the wireframes. Obviously, this is not looking right. This is happening because we need to change the axis of that spline wrap deformer. Let's hit Y. All right, this is looking like the right one, but since that plane doesn't have enough segments, it is not covering up the whole spline. So I believe we need to increase up the bit segments. As you can see, as I increase that up, it is getting better. Now let's go back to the plane and change the height of that plane. Something like that. Now we have another problem. This plane is not straight, is not flat. To do that, I'm gonna duplicate that helix, hold on control and drag this off. I'm gonna rename that to rail and I will move that up just a little bit. It's gonna be enough. Let's go back to the spline wrap and put that rail over here. Perfect. I think that height is too much. That is looking fine. Also, we don't need that many segments, so I'm going to set this to zero. Now we should align these edges. If you remember, I started off with a cylinder, so it comes with 16 segments. So I should go to the plane and change my width segments to 16. Obviously, this is not going to be enough. Let's double this up to 32. Now, I should add 16 one more time. Perfect, this is happening because uh, the spline wraps around the cylinder three times. If you connect these two edges, it's gonna wrap it around three times. So that's why I multiplied 16 with three. So 48 will be the perfect number for us. I'm gonna select these and move them up. Perfect, now we are gonna need thickness. I mean, an extrusion. I'm gonna select the plane, hold down Alt and select cloth surface. We don't want any subdivisions, but thickness. So increase that up to minus five or something like that. Then that's gonna be all right. Let's select the cylinder. By the way, you can take this out of that group and hide them. Select the cylinder, this one. Hold down Alt, select pool, and put that cloth surface under that cylinder. Perfect. These points are not matching, but I'm gonna fix that with a connect object. So while the pool object is selected, hold down Alt and select connect object. Connect object will try to connect these close points based on that threshold. So let's try point two. All right, that seems okay. But to make sure, I'm gonna set this to point three. Nice. Now we can make that connect object editable. Hit C on the keyboard, and here we go. We have our object. Some points may not be connected. Let's fix that quickly. I will go into points mode, grab polygon pen tool and connect these points. We have also another problem, these empty points, but I know a great way to clean these up. Let's click on that icon, go to mesh checking, enable it, and specifically select the edge points, and then simply delete them. Now, I will go into polygon mode, Select them all. By the way, let me turn up that mesh checking. As you can see, the normals are not aligned. To fix it, I will right click and select align normals. Then we can reverse the normals. Select these polygons and move them out. There is an easy way to do that, and it is funk break selection. Go to selection and select funk break selection. I'm gonna increase that angle up to let's say 40 and click on that polygon and it's gonna select these polygons automatically. Now I will grab normal move tool and push this out. Let's see, 
something like that. I'm going to exaggerate it just a little bit. Then I'm going to go up to do normal transforms and select normal scale and scale this down. Something like that. Perfect. Now I'm going to put this one into a subdivision surface. Hold down Alt and click on subdivision surface. It's not looking right because we need sharp edges. This time, instead of spotting edges, I will use weights. Let's make a loop selection. Select these loops, then hit Q, then I'm gonna right click and select weight subdivision surface and let's weight these edges up. Nice, we are getting these hard edges because that object's fong angle has that uh, use edge breaks option and it is on. Let's turn this off and we are gonna get a smooth surface. Also, the other thing is that that amount of subdivisions are too much, so I'm gonna set this to one out of these. Then to make the transition a lot better, I will select that edge, right click on one of the axes and select the normal. Then I'm gonna push that in. Same here. Nice, let's do the same thing on here. Push that in, then this one. So we are gonna get a smooth transition between the shapes. Let's hit Q. All right, looking nice. Now I'm gonna make the subdivision surface editable. Hit C on the keyboard. We can delete that tag. We don't need that anymore. I just used that to get these sharp edges. We don't need these anymore. Then now we are gonna need real sporting edges. Select these edges, hold down control, select slide tool and slide these in. This is gonna create these new edges and I'm gonna use them as sporting edges. Hold down control, bring this down. Then same here. All right, now let's see the result. I will put this one into a side region surface one more time. And this is looking great. Now let's go back to the image plane. I'm gonna move this down. And it looks like the top section is a little different. So I will select this polygon, grow it a few times, and I will hold down control and sprint these up. I'm gonna move this down just a little bit. Then let's add another loop cut over here. And we can get rid of these polygons because they are not going to be visible. Then the bottom parts, I believe we are going to need to select these polygons, hit T, scale them in. Yeah, something like that. I'm going to move them down just a little bit, then hold on control and scale them in. We can delete these polygons and use close polygon hold tool and select patch and change the patch rotation. I think we need to change the patch width as well. All right, now this is looking perfect. Sporting edges, obviously. Hit Q and great. I'm gonna make a funk break selection, UNN selection, funk break selection, and select these polygons. Then I will hit T and scale these in so that we are gonna get these sporting edges. Now it's gonna look much better. And another one. These edges are looking too sharp. Maybe we can scale these in. Great. Then over here, it looks like we have some kind of holes. Let's try to do that. First, I'm gonna move this up just a little bit. Then I will add this loop cut so that we are gonna get more geometry. Then I'm gonna select these polygons. I'm gonna leave one polygon between them. I'm two polygons.
Then I'm going to make any set. Then right click, select the pitch circle tool. We can change the angle. Then I will hit D on my keyboard to get extrude tool. I think we can turn off caps and extrude these in. Then I can just delete them. Now let's hit Q. And this is looking great. I know these are not sharp, but I like that look. It is giving some kind of that tin metal look. So I'm going to keep them like that. Maybe I can select these points and move them down. By the way, let me set this back to world. Move this down. Hit Q. Yeah. Then I can just double click on that edge loop and dissolve it. Perfect. I think we are done with the, that section. Now let's try to model this section. Let's not forget to save that as file, save project as of YouTube, then the son of solo mode. I'm gonna scale this up, then select that. I'm gonna grow my selection and scale this in, then select these polygons only, or we can use the font break selection. Then hit this, hold down control, scale this in, hold down control, and move them up. Then I will just delete these polygons. Then I'm gonna unhide the first helix. Then I'm gonna um, actually, I will just duplicate it just in case we may need this later. Now I'm gonna move that up and change the height. And change the radius. So I believe something like, let's say, 140 or 150 will be enough. I'm going to copy that and paste that over to the and radius. Oops, sorry. Nice. And the other thing I want to change is the end angle that value will be too much so i will set this back to 720 because i'm gonna duplicate this one on the other side so so that's why i lowered that down let's face the next issue we are gonna have and it is gonna be the segments of that helix if i make this one editable and it Going into points mode, you are going to see that we are going to get a bunch of points, which will make it really hard to, you know, move these points around because we are going to do that to match, match the top section of that bulb. So for that reason, by the way, whatever you do with these settings, with the intermediate settings, you are going to get the same amount of points. So we need to create a new spline. To do that, Let's go back and let's go to the top view. I'm going to click on spline pen tool and create a new spline. Something like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. Select them all. Right click and subdivide it. Do that one more time. One more time. And one more time. Now I will hold down shift and select spline wrap. Former. Then I'm gonna put that helix one over here, and uh, actually let's hide the original helix. Now we can see that we have less points, which will make it a lot easier for us to change the shape of that spline. And this is exactly what I am looking for. I think that many points will be more than enough for me. So now let's. By the way, if you select your spline and if you're in points mode, you're going to see the original state of the spline. Now let's go into model mode, hold down alt and select connect object and make it editable. Now we have less points, which is great. Now I will select my spline and duplicate it. Go to coordinates of that new spline object and let's flip it. 
rotate the size x and make it minus 1. Then go to the size z and make it minus 1 as well. Now, this is exactly what I am looking for. Let's select these two, right click, as I say, connect objects and delete. Now we have single spline. Now, all I need to do is connect these two top points. Let's do that. Select the first one, hold down control and drag this off. Now, select the other one and move it over here. Then I will hit zero on my keyboard, or you can select the rectangle selection. Select these two points, right click, and Click on the weld. The top part is too straight, so let's select line cut tool and add a cut right in the middle and move this over here. Nice. By the way, we can change these splines, intermediate points to subdivided. Of course, we need to first change its type to, let's say, B spline. Awesome. We can play around with points, but I'm gonna do that when we apply the sweep generator. By the way, we need to move this up. Actually, speaking of the sweep generator, let's do that. First, I will need a profile, which will be a circle, and I'm going to scale that down. Then I will hold down Alt and select Sweep Generator. Then I'm going to fit the spline we made, we just made under that circle. I will select that circle and scale that down. Yeah, something like that. You can select points of that spline and scale them up. Then I'm going to select that point, move that in. Actually, let's turn off CB, hold on control, and bring this down. I'm going to push them in a little bit more. Then, same here, hold on control. It's going to create a new point. So that is. Move them in. Perfect. Let's hit Q. Maybe a little bit more. And I'm going to scale that circle down just a little bit. Also, we need to watch out for the segments we are having. It might be too much. I'm going to hit NMB. And this is exactly what I am talking about. This is, this is too much. Let's go to the circle. Bring this down to one. Then let's select the other spline and I'm gonna, sorry, the other way. Or we can choose the uniform. Bring this down to something like that. Nice. Let's go back to this connect object. I will hit NNG and go into points mode. Let's see. I'm going to move that in. Same here. It's going to make that transition a lot smoother. Perfect. I think we are done with that section. Now let's make a place on, on these polygons. Before doing that, we are going to need a better topology. So let's first scale this in, then delete them. Then I'm going to use close polygon hole tool. I will change the patch rotation. Nice. Then I can select these polygons, make an inset. Then use fit circle tool. We should unhide everything and move these around. 
Let me get scale in. All right, this is going to be OK. Hold that control, move these up, then make another inset. Let's move them in. Then we can delete these polygons. I will do the same thing on that side. Select these polygons, make an inset, then use fit circle tool. I can use the same amount. They apply. Oops. Mm, okay, let's try any one. Interesting. Let's solo this. Do it one more time. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe we can scale this. Yeah. It's much better. Unhide. Move this around. Hold that control. Hold this up. Like an inset. It is not happening. I believe there are multiple points. Yeah, exactly. If I select that point, it says that actually there are two on 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 this point. So let me select all the points, Control A, and use Optimize tool. I will do that one more time. It didn't work. Let's solo this. Yeah, something bad happened over here. So let's delete these polygons inside. Then I'm gonna select these edges. Hold down, Control, scale them in. Select Move tool. Move this down. Nice. Now, I think it's time to put these under a single subdivision surface. So select these objects and put them under subdivision surface. Enable it. It's not going to work. It's going to only affect the top object under the subdivision surface. By the way, this is the wrong one. I need to put that. All right. If I hit N and B, you're going to see that it's going to affect the top object. So for that reason, we need to group them. Select them all. Hit Alt and G. Nice. Now, mm, select this one and grab loop cut tool. I'm going to add this one. Then let me check this. Mm, yeah, this is very really similar. Maybe over here. And then select the polygons inside and scale them in. Other than that, there is a seam right over here. So I'm going to. Grab slide tool, hold down control, move this down so that I can select these polygons and use extrude tool and extrude them in. Hit Q, we are going to need supporting edges over here. Maybe this is too much, so I will make a loop selection and bring these up. Hit Q. Perfect. Uh, I'm gonna select that circle back and change its scale just a little bit more. Uh, I can see it. Let's hold that image plane. Hmm. Actually, yeah, we are right on on point. This is looking great. I think this is gonna be it for the modeling process. Now, I will see you in the next part, which will be about rendering and creating material, etc. you know.